Drink, little one. No, no, thank you. I don't want it somehow. A little vodka? Not today, no. I can't drink it every day. It's not good for me. Nanny, how long have we known each other? How long? Mm. Oh, Lord, let me see. You came here when? Sonetsky's mother was still with us then, and you were here the last two winters she was still alive. What's that? Eleven years? More? How much have I changed? How much? Yes. Very much, I think. Then you were young. Now you're old. I think your looks have faded. And you're drinking now. Become a different man. That's true. Why? Why? Overworked, simply. On my feet all day, every day. Every night. I go to sleep in fear I'll be called out on a call. In the years you've known me, I've not had one single free day. Do you know that? And how can I help but become old? You tell me, living such a life. In the midst of people, as you can see. And think of them as characters. You notice, time passes, bit by bit you become one of them. <laughs> I ask you, look at this moustache. Why? To what purpose? I've become some jolly type, not dead yet. Some enthusiasm, some thoughts. Quite subdued. We could say subdued. Dull, somehow. Nothing that I want, nothing that I need. No one that I love. I love you, of course. When I was young, do you know, I had a nurse who was exactly like you. Eat. No. Third week in Lent. I was called the Malitskoy, spotted fever. There were rows of huts and people in the huts, side by side on the floor, lying in the filth. Cattle living in the buildings with the sick, and young pigs in there in the same room. All day working, not a bite to eat. And I come home, thank God, to lie down, to rest, and... They bring in a switchman, hit by the train, and... Uh, and I get him on the table, I'm going to start operating. And he dies under the chloroform. All right, at the moment I least required it, my conscience chose to inform me I murdered him. I sat down, I closed my eyes, I thought, 100 years from now, 100 years from now, those who come after us, for whom our lives are showing the way, will they think kindly of us? Will they remember us with a kind word? Yes, I wish to God I could think so. People won't remember, but God will. Thank you. That was nicely said. Yes. Oh, yes. Sleep well? Yes, very. I tell you, since the Herr und Frau Professor have come to visit, my life has gone completely off the track. I'm sleeping days, I'm up nights, I'm served all sorts of je ne sais quoi to eat. I don't think it's healthy. I'm drinking wines. Used to be every day, each moment ordered. Work. This, well. Well, Sonia's still working, of course, but what am I doing? Eat, sleep, drink. It isn't good. Modern ways. Absolutely right. The professor sleeps till noon. I keep the samovar on the boil all morning, waiting for him to get up. Before then, we ate dinner at noon, eh? Like people everywhere. Now it's after six. He writes and reads all night. Two o'clock in the morning, there's a ring, and what is it, please? Excuse me, he wants tea. 
Wake the house, please. Put on the samovar. Modern ways. How much longer are they here? A hundred years. Who wants to move here? No. See, here's two hours. The samovar has been on the boil. And where are they? Out walking. Don't fret. Here they come. Magnificent, beautiful views. What a prospect. Oh, beautiful, Your Excellency. Tomorrow I'll take you to the plantation, Papa. Would you like that? Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, tea is served. Do you mind, friends? Would you please send it to my study? I have a few things I have to do. I know you'll like the plantation. It's hot, it's sweltering, and our great scholar dresses for December. Quite a careful man. But she, magnificent, eh? Now that is a stunning woman. I don't think I've ever seen a more beautiful woman. I'm so happy. Whatever I do, walk in the garden, look at the stable. <laughs> Whatever I do, Marina Timofeyevna, I do it and I feel happiness. <laughs> God bless you. The weather's magnificent. The birds are singing. We live in peace and harmony. What else could a man want? <laughs> Thank you. And her eyes. Ivan Petrovich. Yeah. Tell us something. What should I tell you? Tell us something. Something new. Something new? What's new? Everything's old. Nothing's changed. I am the same. My old crow, my old mother still prates on of the rights of women, of one eye on the grave and the other in her books for the secret of life. <laughs> and thou professor? The professor. Goes on as before. He sits at his desk all day and half the night and he writes. <laughs> I pity the paper. <laughs> What's he doing in there all day? What's he working on? <laughs> Why doesn't he turn to some magnificent subject like his autobiography? God forbid. <laughs> oh, now there's a book. A worked out academic assault cod, a learned stick, gout, rheumatism, migraine, his liver inflamed with jealousy and envy, lives on the estate of his first wife from choice? No, because he's too damn cheap to live in town. This man constantly prates of his misfortunes. What are they? He has none. The man lives under a charm. The son of a poor deacon, eh? The scholarship student at the seminary gets a degree, gets a teaching chair. It's known as your excellency. Marries the daughter of a senator and so on. And I say forget that, for this man is so exceedingly fortunate as to write and lecture about a subject of which he knows less than not one thing. Twenty-five years this wise man has been telling us about art. Twenty-five years he's been reading the works of others. He talks about realism, naturalism, specious nonsense which the clever have long known and which the stupid do not care about. He's been going to a dry well with a broken bucket. And yet what self-importance, what pretension, living in retirement. Not a living soul knows who he is or cares. And you look at him. He walks on earth like, yes, I am here among you. You know, I believe you're jealous. No, oh, yes, I am jealous. What a success with women. What a Don Juan is this man. Who is his first wife? My sister. A transcendent beauty, pure as the blue sky. Generous, noble who had more admirers than this man had students and, God knows why, loved him as only the pure angels love. My mother, his mother-in-law, dotes on him to this day. To this day, he inspires in her reverent awe and his second wife, this beauty whom we just saw, a perceptive woman, married him. He was already old and gave up to him her youth, her beauty, her freedom, her luster. For what? Why, I ask you? She stays faithful to him? 
Regrettably, yes. Regrettably? Yes. I will tell you why. For a fidelity like this is false from first to close. It's composed of rhetoric, not of logic, eh? To, to cheat. To cheat on an old man who revolts you, that is immoral. But to stifle yourself in unhappiness, to willfully squander your youth, we can commend that. Eh? Please, no, don't speak like that, no. Someone who could betray a wife or a husband could just as easily betray, betray their country. Please, you're killing me. Please, Vanya, allow me. My wife ran off from me the day after our wedding. I don't think she liked me. Have I, did I forget my duty? No, to this day I love and revere her, and to this day I stay faithful. And I support her all I can. That is, I give her all I have. It's so that she could raise her children. Which she got with a man that she loves. Have I given up happiness? Yes. But I kept my pride. What of her? Her youth is gone, her beauty as it must has faded, and her lover has died. What does she have now? Nanny? Yes? You go talk to the peasants. I'll see to the tea. You know, I came to see your husband. You wrote me he was deathly ill with rheumatism, complications. It seems he's in the perfect pink of health. Last night he was ill. Hmm? He complained of his legs. Yes, though today you're right, he does seem fine. He seems fine, and I've flat out galloped 20 miles. Oh, never mind. It's not the first time. <laughs> All right, I'll stay here tonight. If you don't mind, then, at least I'll get some sleep. Oh, lovely. So rare that you stay the night here with us. I don't expect you've eaten, have you? No, many thanks, and thank you kindly. No, I haven't, no. Well, then, you'll get your sleep and get your dinner. These days, we're not dining until six. Cold tea. Yes, the heat in the samovar has markedly decreased. <laughs> no matter, Ivan Ivanovich, we'll drink it cold. Oh, begging your pardon, madam, not Ivan Ivanovich, but Ilya Ilyich, madam. Ilya Ilyich. Oh, some people have called me waffles in referring to my pockmarked face. Waffles. Uh, some years ago, I had the honor to stand godfather to our Sonichka, and, and your husband, His Excellency, knows me very well. Uh, I'm living here now, on the estate, and... Uh, you may have noticed, madam, that I have dinner with you every day. Ilya Ilyich is our good right hand. Ah! Yes? I forgot to tell Alexandre. I received a letter today from Kharkov. Pavel Alexeyevich sent me his new pamphlet. Oh, yes, and is it interesting? Interesting, yes, but strange. He's now refuting the very things he was defending seven years ago. How? How? What? How awful. Nothing awful in it happens all the time. Drink your tea, Mamo. No. I want to talk. We all want to talk. We've been talking. We've been talking the last 50 years. 50 years we've been talking, reading, writing pamphlets, I say enough. Why is it you find it unpleasant to hear me speak? Excuse me, Jean, but this last year you've changed so much I hardly know you. You used to be a man of character, a man of fine opinions, an enlightened man. Now... Oh, yes, I was so enlightened. It's unfortunate I lit the way for no one. An enlightened man. What worse could you say of me? I'm 47 years of age. Up to a year ago, I felt the same way as you did. I joyed to cloud my mind with this... this rank scholasticism which we all hold so dear and not to see real life i knew that i was doing right oh what a fine man now excuse me if only you knew how can we know if you don't tell us my nights are spent in vicious fury at the life i've let slip away from me i could have had everything in life everything and i've had nothing and now i'm too old oh uncle it's depressing you're blaming your former convictions but it's not your convictions that are to blame. It's you. Your convictions are nothing in themselves, like paint in a palette. You should have got down to work. Real work. Real work? Yes. 
We are not all called forth, you know, like your hair, Professor, to go speaking, writing, spewing work forth like some farm machine. What do you mean by that? Grandmother. Uncle Vanya, please. I'm sorry, I'm done. I'm silent. Excuse me. What a lovely day. Not too hot. Excellent weather for suicide. Please, is the doctor here? Please, Mikhail, Trigovich, they're looking for you. Oh. From the factory. Oh, fine, that's fine. Well, I have to go. Damn it. What a shame. Oh, I'm so sorry. Please come back for dinner. Hmm? After the factory. Won't be too late, won't it? How could I? How could I? Look, friend, get me a glass of vodka, will you? How? Oh. How? Oh. <laughs> what was that? A Strosky play about the man with the big moustache and the small abilities. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> oh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honour. <laughs> If you should like to stop by sometime, perhaps, with Sofia Alexandrovna here, I'd be most delighted. There's not a lot to see. I only have the 30 acres. But if it interested you, next to me, we have a model orchard, such as you won't find within 800 miles. The state plantation. The overseer, the old forester, he's usually ill, you see, and actually I get to oversee the work myself. Yes. They told me you love the woods. Yes. I suppose it's much good to be down there. Much good. But my question is, doesn't that interfere with your real calling? My real calling? <sighs> God knows what our real calling is. The woods. You find that interesting? Fascinating, yes. Yes. Fascinating. You don't seem that old. What would we say? 36, 37? So? How interesting can that be, really? Alone in the woods all day, I should think it quite monotonous. Oh, not at all, no. It's quite interesting. Every year he plots new forests. Or he makes a plan to conserve the old ones. He's received both a medal and a diploma for his work. And if you listen to him, you'll see what he means. He says that forests embellish the land, that they instill in man a love of beauty. They raise the mind. They moderate the climate, and in countries with a milder climate, the people struggle less with nature. So in those lands, man is milder, gentler. And the people in those lands are more supple and beautiful. Their speech is more refined. Their movements are more graceful. They cultivate the arts and sciences. There is joy in their philosophy. They treat women with nobleness. Bravo, bravo, magnificent but not convincing. My dear, as I must persist in fueling my stoves and building with those same woods that you so prize. Burn peat in your stoves. Mm -hmm. Build your barn of stones. Do you understand? Yes, sometimes we cut wood out of necessity, but why be wanton? Why? Our forests fall before the axe, billions of trees all perishing. Homes of birds and beasts being laid waste. The level of our rivers falls. They dry up and sublime landscapes disappear, never to return. Because man hasn't sense enough to bend down and pick fuel up from the ground. Isn't this so? I mean, what must man be to destroy what he never can create? God's given man reason and power of thought so that he may improve his lot. And what, what do we use these powers for? But waste. We destroyed the forest. 
The rivers run dry. A wildlife is all but extinct. The climate is ruined. And every day, every day, wherever one looks, one's life is more hideous. Oh, I see. You think me amusing. These seem to you the thoughts of some poor eccentric. Well, perhaps. Perhaps it's naive, too, on my part. Perhaps that's what you think. But I pass by the forest that I've saved from the axe. I hear the forest sigh. I planted the forest. And I think perhaps things may be in our control, you understand? Perhaps the climate itself is in our control. Why not? And if in 1,000 years man's happy, then I've been a part of that happiness. Small part. I plant a birch tree, I watch it take root, it grows, it sighs in the wind, and I feel such pride. Well. Well, I must be off. And of course, it's possible I'm just deluded. I thank you for the honor of your hospitality. Mm. When will you come see us again? I can't say. Sooner than next month, I hope. You, Ivan Petrovich, what? Have you fallen in one of your moods again? Excuse me? You were being impossible. Was I? Yes, you were. Why are you baiting your mother? And this morning at breakfast, you quarreled with Alexandre. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, how petty. Petty? Yes. What if I hate him? Why should you hate him? He's just like everybody else. He's no worse than you. Oh, please. Look at yourself. Your face. Look at the way you move. You're too lazy to live with your torpor. Too lazy to live. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> and too bored, do you know? Everyone berates my husband. Everyone berates him. Everybody pities me. Oh, the poor woman saddled with such an old man. Yes, they're so concerned for me. Well, you must excuse me, but it's quite disgusting, don't you think? Tell me, what has Astrov said? You cut down woodlands you cannot replace, and soon they will be gone. And you cut men down, mindlessly, and soon it will be gone. True feeling, purity, fidelity, self-sacrifice, it will be gone, do you understand? You cannot, you, you do not, why can you not look with indifference on a woman who is not your own? Why? Because the doctor is right. There is in each one of you a demon of destruction which spares nothing. Neither forests, birds, nor women, nor each other. It's... You know, I don't care much for this philosophy. He has a tired face. He? A doctor. Yes, he does. An interesting face. A nervous face, I think. Sonia finds him attractive. I think she's in love with him. I understand it. <laughs> Do you know, he's, he's come here three times since I've been here, and I haven't once spoken with him properly. What do you think? He must think me mean. Must he? Yes. I've never shown him any kindness. <laughs> Do you know why we're such good friends, Ivan Petrovich? No. It's because we're both tiresome people. You're both dull. Please don't look at me that way. I don't like it. Who else can I look at you? I love you. I look and I see my life, my happiness, my youth. I know the chances you reciprocate my feelings and nothing I want, nothing. Only that you permit me to look, to hear your voice. So I hear you. Only that you let me speak to Biddy. Oh, God. 
was awful. Who is it? Sonia? Is that you? That's me. Oh, Linotska. I'm in pain. Help me. Oh, your blankets fell. Oh, close the windows. No! It's stifling in here. I dozed off and I dreamt my leg belonged to someone else and I was woken by the pain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I don't think it's gout, you know. I think it's rheumatism. What time is it? Twenty past twelve. In the morning, please go to the library. Look for the Bachu scroll. I think we have him. Hmm? In the morning, please look for... Please look for Bachuskov. I recall we had him. Why can I not breathe? Two nights with no sleep. You're tired. And they say Turgain have developed angina pectoris and gout. Now get it too, then. Eh? Damn old age. Damn revolting impotent old age. I am old. and grow repulsive to myself. And I'm sure you too find it revolting to look at me. You know, you speak of your old age in a tone that suggests it's our fault that you've grown old. And I revolt you most of all. <laughs> You're right, of course. They're not stupid. I understand. You're young, you're healthy, and you're beautiful. You want to live, and here am I, an old man, more than one foot in the grave. Isn't that right? Of course it's right. A foolish I must feel later, but we're still living, but be patient. Soon I'll set you all free. I give my word, but longer. Oh, God, no, please. I'm ready to collapse. Be still, please. Yes, yes, of course, you're all ready to collapse, all of you, everyone bored, wasting their youth. I'm the only one content, as is. Be silent, you're destroying me. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm destroying everyone, of course. What do you want from me? Nothing. Well, be quiet, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Tell you the most peculiar thing. Ivan Petrovich, that dolt, and Maria Vasilyanov, they begin holding forth this fine. Everyone listens, everyone's rapt attention. I say one word, and the world feels utterly depressed. You understand? The mere sound of my voice they find repulsive. Fine, fine, let us stipulate I am repulsive. I am a despot. I am that sick egoist you all feel me to be. Have I not earned it? Have I not, am I not, I ask you, entitled to this? A peaceful old age and the least modicum of consideration from those around me. No one disputes your rights. I've worked my whole life for science, respected and honoured. I felt the simple pleasures one studied, you know, in the lecture halls, warm respect to one's peers, and then I'm thrust, thrust, for no apparent reason in this tomb among the mindless. Every day they're prattle, stuffing my ears. I want to live. I work for these things. For success, recognition, action, here I am in exile. Every waking moment I can pine for the past, I can envy the success of others, or I can fear death. And those three choices are my life. I cannot, I cannot, and God, they begrudge me even my old age. Have patience. Five or six more years, I'll be old too. Papa, you sent for Dr. Astroff. Now he's here and you don't want him. Please, what do I tell him now we've put him out for nothing? What good can Astroff do me? The man knows as much of medicine as I do beekeeping. What am I to do, please? We sent for him. He's a fool and I won't speak to him. As you wish, then. Fine. What time is it? Almost one. I can't breathe. Sonia, please, my drop's on the table. Just a moment. No, oh, not these. The drops I asked for, for God's sake. Some may appreciate this peevishness. I don't. Please spare me. I don't like it. I haven't the time. I need my rest. Tomorrow is a working day. There's a storm brewing outside. Will you look at that? 
Ellen, Sonia, off to bed. You are relieved. Don't leave me with him. He'll talk me to death. They need their rest. No. They need their rest. Two nights without sleep. All right, fine. The two of them to bed, and you two with my thanks, sincerely. But I beg you for our friendship's sake, please leave me alone. For? And we'll talk later. For our friendship? Our... Uncle Vanya. No, oh, my dear. Don't leave me with him. I'm quite serious. You know, this is becoming funny. Nanny, you ought to be in bed. It's late. Well, fine. The samovar is on the table. Easy to say, go to bed. Everyone's up. Everyone is fatigued beyond measure. I alone am happy. I'm in ecstasy. What is it, little father, now? The legs. My legs hurt me, too. I have the Ralja, Ralja all the day. Your old complaint, I know. Vera Petrovna, rest in peace. Sonetska's sainted mother took it so to heart when your legs hurt. You know that she did. She loved you so, that woman. The old are like the young. They want someone to pity them. But no one feels sorry for the old. You've got to be a nice one. I'll bring you linden tea. And I'll warm your feet for you, yet I will. And I will pray for you. Hmm? No, go on. Ralda, too. I have a too. Pain in the legs. Vera Petrovna would cry. Anyone's pain moved her. Sonetska, then, such a little one. Come along, my little father, now. We are going to go to bed. That's right. <laughs> So tired by him, I can hardly stand. Well, you're tired by him. I'm sick of myself. This is my third night without sleep. I'm tired to nausea. This is not a happy home. Your mother loathes everything in this world except her dear pamphlets and the professor. The professor mistrusts me. He fears you. Fears me? Yes, he does. Sonia's angry with her father. Pettish with me. Hasn't said a single word to me in two weeks. Not one word. And you hate my husband. You despise your mother and make no effort to conceal it. Though I go around 20 times a day, I'm on the edge of tears. One would not say this is a happy home. Let's drop this discourse, shall we? Ivan Petrovich, you are an educated man, a thoughtful man, and I would expect you to see or to accept if you thought of it. I'm listening. That our world is worsened, not by fires or robbers. Do you understand? I hate. Our world is destroyed by hate, by pettiness. And your job should be to be strong and not to grumble. Not to carve, but simply to reconcile. To make peace. I'd make my peace with you. Let me stop it right now. I'd like it if you left now. Please. Yes. The rain is ending. Everything will be refreshed. The earth exhales. But I shall not be refreshed by the coming and the passing of the storm. All my life, day and night, I feel this. My past has been squandered on nonsense and my present has sunk in absurdity. Isn't that something? My one feeling is for you. Can I renounce it? My one feeling in life. And it's dying like a ray of sun shone in the well and I'm dying. You speak to me of love. How am I to deal with that? I don't know. I'm sorry, but it's true. What do you expect? So, sorry, forgive me. I must say goodnight. Coincidentally, though, here, 
by my side. Another life is being wasted in this house. Whose could that be? What are you waiting for? Eh? For your life to end? What stupid, pointless principle stands in your way, you wasteful, you fool? Do you comprehend what I'm telling you? Ivan Petrovich, are you drunk? It very well could be. Where's the doctor? He's spending the night in my room. It could be. It could be. Anything could be. Why have you been drinking? Why? Because it seems like life. Don't scold me. You never used to drink. Well, I drink now. No. And you never spoke so much. Didn't I? Oh, perhaps it's. Go to bed. You bore yes. me. Do I? My enchanted one. Please, oh, oh, please. <laughs> Ten years ago, I'd see her at my sister's. She was 17. I was 37. I could have proposed to her, and now she'd be my wife. And both of us would have been woken by the storm. The thunder frightened you. God's name am I old? What's happened to me? <sighs> With her damn pseudo morality, her lazy, stupid intellect, her jargon notions of the ruin of the world. Who the hell does she think she is? They cheated me. I worship that man, that pitiful. Fox ridden academic, our professor, and worked like a slave for him. And Sonia. We squeezed the last dregs out of this estate like slaves. We sold the vegetable oil. We sold the curds, the peas. We begrudged ourselves food to save half copecks and sent thousands to him. Why shouldn't we as proud as we were? To a man of genius, we basked in him. And now this man retires, and what does he leave? What work? What? What? He leaves nothing. Not a single page. And nothing. Unknown. A fraud. A vicious failure who cheated a man who loved him. Play something. The house is asleep, sir. Play it. Oh. All alone. No ladies, eh? <laughs> the house is flying. The stove is flying. Where can the master make his bed? Storm woke me up. It's some rain. What time is it, eh? I don't give a damn. I heard Yelena Andreevna. Probably. Splendid woman. Oh. Lord, help us when doctors disagree. Is there a town whose pharmacy isn't represented here? The whole region must be sick of his gout. You tell me. Is he sick or shamming? He's sick. And you? What's your complaint? 
Sympathetic nature? Leave me alone. Or could you be sick with love for the invalid's wife? We're just friends. Already. What can that mean? A woman and a man can be friends only at the end term of this sequence. First acquaintance, then lovers, and then... That's right. Friends. A lovely, elegant philosophy. Think so? Yes, I confess I'm becoming a Bulgarian. I'm drunk too. I tell you, normally I, I drink this much just once a month. When I am this drunk, I become arrogant and brazen to the last degree. And nothing in that state will faze me then. I undertake and perform the most difficult feats flawlessly see the future, devise the most elegant plans. And during that time, I no longer seem to myself an awkward and useless member of the world. No, I seem on the contrary, a powerful emotive force with my own system of thought and philosophy. And all of you, my dears, for it's true, look as big as microbes. Or some quite, quite unimportant thing. Would you play, please? I'm afraid for you, as you know. Anything but then all asleep. Play. <laughs> Let's have a drink. I know there's some left. Then at daylight, we'll go to my place. Up for it? Is there a fellow who works for me, says that the whole time. Up for it? Not a nice man. You up for it? Excuse me, I'm undressed. Uncle Vanya. As you will. You've got drunk with the doctor again. Two free voices found each other in the wild and formed a pact. Why do you do this? At your age, you know it's truly unattractive. My age doesn't enter into it. No? A man with nothing, with no real life, subsists on fantasy then that's something in his life. The haze cut. Every day it rains and everything is rotten and you live on fantasy. You've thrown your work up. I'm working alone. I'm tired. You neglect your job. You... Uncle, are you crying? Oh, I'm not, I'm not crying. I see the tears in your eyes. Just now, do you know, you looked at me just like your dear mother. Oh, my darling sister. Where are you now? Oh, my dear, if only you knew. What is it you should know? It isn't good. isn't good. Nothing. I'm coming. Mikhail Ivovich, you're not asleep. Hello. May I speak with you? If it aids you to drink, please drink. But I beg of you, please do not let my uncle drink. It's so bad for him. So be it, but drink no more. I can count on you. Settled and signed. Now I'll be getting home. 
They'll tie their harness. The sun will be up. Why not wait till morning? Oh, no. It's raining. Yeah. A storm will pass. All right. I think that's the end of it. No, I'll go. Oh, one thing. Please don't call me for your father anymore. I tell him gout, he says rheumatism. I say stay in bed, he sits up. I'm called to see him and he doesn't speak to me. He's difficult. Uh -huh. Can I get you something to eat? Y yes, I'll take something, can't you? They say that through his life, he was a great success with women, and that women spoiled him. Here, have some cheese. <clears throat> Today I didn't eat a thing. Today I drank. <laughs> yes, your father's difficult. May I? You know we're alone here. Let me speak candidly, do you think? I couldn't live one month in this house. With your father and his gout. And um, your uncle with his, what is it, depression? And your grandmother. Stepmother. My stepmother. It's nice. It should be godly to have beauty. Beauty should be pure, a face, a dress, of the mind. And here is a beautiful, a lovely woman. And all she does is eat, sleep, and stroll through the day to enchant us all with that great beauty which is hers. She does no more. She has no duties, no responsibilities. Others work for her. How can an idle life be pure? Have I gone too far? Yeah. Perhaps I have. I'm like your uncle Vanya. Disappointed in life, become a detractor. Disappointed? Mm. In life? Not in life, no. In our life. Our provincial, our Russian life, I hated with the power of my soul. My life, my own personal life. <laughs> I am pleased to swear to God there is not one thing good in it. <sighs> when you walk through the woods, if you walk through the woods at night, if you have a glimmer, a small gleam of light before you, then you needn't feel them, the night, nor darkness, or fatigue, nor the branches as they whip your face. But I, as you know, work alone, I live alone. There is no one. And those things which assail me, <laughs> as there is no light before me which could make my burden light, so I expect nothing. There is nothing for me. And you know, I don't like people. And have for the longest time loved no one. You've loved no one? No. Well, a certain affection. I feel affection, for example, towards your nurse. You do? Yes. Our peasants, so alive. Living in squalor. What are we living? Our intelligentsia. Our good and 
Stupid friends. Put it bluntly, do you see? Small concerns. Small thoughts and feelings. And the brighter they are, the worse they get. Assailed by introspection. An analysis. What's happened to the world? And they whine and spew and slander. Oh, this one's a psychopath. And that one's a phrase monger. And then let them find someone they can't pigeonhole. He's the most peculiar man. Now, I love the forest. I don't eat meat. A most peculiar man. Where could we look to find a simple, unencumbered, spontaneous relation to our fellows in the world? Where? Nowhere. Nowhere on this earth, I assure you. Please, no more. Hmm? Please don't drink. I know. It isn't like you. Is that what you think? <laughs> You're refined. And you have a gentle voice. You, more than anyone I know her, as you spoke of, beautiful. Why do you act in an ordinary way? I... You drink and you gamble. Do I? Please stop. You say that people don't work to create, but to destroy those gifts they are given from above. Don't do it. You don't have to do it. Please. Please, I implore you, please. I won't drink. You won't drink again? No. Give me your word of honor. I'll give it. Thank you. Basta, eh? Ah. I've sobered up. Oh. Sober already. And I shall stay so, as I vowed till the end of my days. <laughs> my time has passed. I'm old, I'm jaded. Overworked. My feelings are blunt. Lost capacity for all attachments. What attracts me? What attracts me? Beauty attracts me. I can't remain indifferent to it. Yelena Andreevna, for example, you see? She could turn my head in a day. But that's not love now, is it? What is it? Nothing. What is it? You know, in Lent I had a man down in the chloroform. It's time you forgot it. Mm. If... Would you tell me, Mikhail Lvovich, if a friend of mine... If I had such a friend or a younger sister of mine and you... Suppose you discovered that this girl loved you. What would that make you feel? I had no idea. I would suspect I wouldn't feel a thing. You'd feel nothing? I think... What I think is... I would give her to understand how I could never love her. Could you perhaps ask me this later? <laughs> if I am to go, I must go, and the time is now. Farewell, my dove. If we keep talking, we'll be talking till noon. <laughs> I think I'll go there.
this way, if you permit me. I fear your uncle will detain you here. He's told me nothing, and yet I'm happy. He keeps his heart and his soul from me, and yet I'm happy, and I don't care. Why am I so happy? A beautiful man, I said. You have a lovely voice. Was that forward of me? And I don't care. I don't think so. Why should I? I love his voice. And yet... I spoke to him about my friend, a younger sister, and he didn't understand a word. Oh, Lord, how could you make me so plain? Last Sunday at church, the woman behind me said she's so kind and generous, it's such a pity she's so plain. She's so plain. End of the storm. Such peace in the air. Where's the doctor? Gone. Sophie. What? How long are you going to go on being angry with me? We've done no harm to each other. Why should we be enemies? Don't you feel that? No. I... Yes. I wanted to. I wanted to, too. Let's not be angry and... With all my heart. Oh, Lord. That's good. Thank you. Has Papa gone to bed? No. He's still sitting up. Weeks at a time we don't speak to each other. God only knows why. What's this? Mikhail Vovich was having some supper. Will you drink with me? I will. Rudaschaft. Out of the same glass. <laughs> will you kiss me? I will. <laughs> I wanted to make it up for so long. I felt ashamed. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? It's all right. It's nothing. Oh, Lord. Oh, I'm crying too. <laughs> you were angry with me because you think I married your father for my own convenience. If you believe oaths, I give you my oath. I married him for love. I was drawn to him. A famous man, a, a man of learning. I was captivated by it. But it was not real. For love was not real. But I thought it was real at the time. I, I thought it was real. And I'm not to blame, Sophie, but since our wedding day, you haven't stopped accusing me. I accused you. You did. I could see it in your eyes. Your clever and suspicious eyes looking on. And now we forget it. You mustn't look like that on people, Sophie. It doesn't suit you. And we must trust. How can we live if we do not? I have to ask you. Yes. Honestly, yes. As a friend, yes. Are you happy? Yes. I knew that. And now, honestly, 
Would you have preferred to have had a younger husband? Oh, what a schoolgirl you are. Would you? Yes. I should have liked that. <laughs> All right. What else? <clears throat> Do you like the doctor? Very much. Do I look foolish? Do I? <laughs> I'm sure that I do. <laughs> do you know? Though he's gone, I hear his voice. I do. I hear his footsteps. And if I look over by the dark window, I see him there. Let me say it. Oh, I feel ashamed. Should we talk in my room? Do I look foolish? <laughs> yes, of course I do. <laughs> Tell me about him. What should I tell? Isn't he so clever? <laughs> Isn't he? Beyond that, he can do things. He, he heals. He heals people. He plants. Oh, my dear, it's so much more than that. It is. Oh, yes. It isn't forests or birds or medicine. No. But he has his talent, darling. Scope of mind. He plants a tree, and when he plants it, he sees, or he's trying to see, what comes of his action in a thousand years. A thousand years, do you know? He's thinking of the happiness of man. When you find such beautiful people. Yes. They must be loved. He drinks. Yes, he does. And he can be coarse. Hmm? Coarse. <laughs> <laughs> but a man of soul in Russia cannot remain spotless. <laughs> Show this man to me, I say, what of it? <laughs> if you think of his life on the passable roads, freezing day and night, vast distances, he ministers to crude, barbarous folk, their poverty, their ignorance around him constantly disease. A man who lives this life. I wish you this happiness with all my soul. <gasps> you deserve it. You deserve happiness. <laughs> I am just a dull second rank character. And my music and my husband's house, my love affairs. Throughout my entire life, that is what I've been. Yes, as a matter of fact, when you come to think of it, I'm quite thoroughly unhappy. <laughs> I will never find it in this world. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> Will I play something? Yes! <laughs> I can't sleep, play! Oh, people ask your father sometimes when he's ill, music sometimes upsets. He says it's all right. Good! Oh, it's been so long since I've played. I'll play. And then I'll cry like some damn fool. <laughs> Is that you outside, Yefim? It's me. Yes. C could you please stop that? The master's not well. At once. Thank you. Here, dogs, don't. He says that we can't. The Herr Professor has been good enough as to express this, that he wishes that we all should gather in the drawing room at one o'clock this afternoon. That's in one quarter hour, at which time he has something which he wishes to share with the world. 
Some business matter, probably. What business? He has none anymore. He writes rubbish, he grumbles all day, he envies the world, and that's his life. Uncle! All right, all right, you're right. Echo how she walks, this woman. Morbid with laziness. A panorama of inaction. Bella. <laughs> Must you prate all day? Must you go on always? I'm dying of boredom. Is there nothing to do? There's no lack of things to do if you wish to do them. Tell me one. Teach. Treat the sick. Care for the estate. Huh. Much to do. When you and Papa weren't here, Uncle and I would go to the market and sell flour. I wouldn't know how. Besides, it doesn't interest me. In ideological novels, people jump up and declare they're going to teach or treat the sick. <laughs> how should I do that? Just suddenly... <laughs> If you did it, you'd be drawn to it. Oh, yes, my darling. You're bored. You don't know what to do. There's no end to it. I know. It's so contagious. Uncle Vanya has it now, and he does nothing. And follows you like a cloud on a leash. I put my own work down to come over to chat. I've grown so lazy. And our doctor, Mikhail Lvovich, who came once a month, if that, is here every day. Turns his back both on his forests and his medicine, and lives under your spell. My spell? You sorcerer. Oh, why are you languishing, my dear, my splendor, awaken and pulse with life? You, when the blood of mermaid courses through your veins, awaken to your mermaid life, rise to the heights and plunge into the frothy brine. Love with a water spirit awaits you in your guise as naiad of perfection. And then the Herr Professor, then all of us will raise up our heads and say, Who is that nimble? Oh, will you shut up? <laughs> Did <laughs> I? cruel, cruel. Oh, forgive me, my joy, forgive me. I apologize. Forgive me, peace. An angel of patience would become short with you. As a peace Admit offering? It. As an offering of peace, I will present you with a bouquet of roses which flowers I have had the foresight to have obtained this morning. Autumn roses. Sad roses. For you. Sad autumn roses. <laughs> Already September. How are we to live through another winter here? Where's the doctor? Uncle Vanya's room. He's writing something. I'm glad Uncle's gone. I have to talk with you. About what? About what? About what? Oh, I'm so... oh, there, there. I'm plain. You have beautiful hair. No. The homely woman's told, oh, what beautiful hair. I've loved him for six years. I love him more than I love my own mother. I hear him every moment, and I feel his hand. I look at the door, and I think at any moment... I keep coming to you about him. He's here. He looks right through me. I have no hope, and I know it. Oh, God, give me strength. All night I pray. I can't stop myself from going up to him. I look in his eyes. I confessed yesterday to Uncle Vanya. All the servants know I love him. Everybody knows. What does he think? He doesn't notice me. Aha. Uh -huh. <clears throat> you know, he's a strange man. Do you know what? If... Let me approach him. I'll be discreet. A most gentle hint. What do you think? Oh, really? How long can you go on living in uncertainty? Yes? <sighs> yes, good. The question... He loves you or doesn't, and oh. can that be hard to know? Now, don't you be embarrassed, my girl. Don't you worry. I will be very gentle, and I'll find the answer. I'll probe him, and I'll never know. <laughs> yes or no? Uh, and if, if it's no, 
then let him stop coming here. Yes? Yes, I think so. All right, well, well begun is nearly done. We'll put the question. He was going to show me some maps. Tell him that I want him. You'll tell me the truth. I will. Because I think the truth, no matter how bad, is never so bad as uncertainty. I promise you. You wish to see his maps? That's right. But in uncertainty, at least... Yes? ...is hope. Excuse me? No, you're right. Lord, Lord. What is worse than knowing someone's secret and standing by powerless? Clearly, the man cares nothing for her. But why shouldn't he take her? Granted, she's not beautiful, but for a country doctor, his age. A kind, pure, intelligent girl, what's wrong with her for a wife? Nothing. Not a thing. Live in a gray world like this. And you hear nothing but the banal all day. What everyone eats, and drinks, and thinks. And then this man appears. Captivating man. Handsome. Like a bright-colored moon rose from the trees. To yield to such a man. Well, you said, mermaid's blood runs in your veins for once in your life. Indulge yourself. Well, should I not do that for once in my life, as the man said, once in my life, and fly away from all these sleepy countenances, these dull faces, this sameness, this death in life. Why should I not? Great coward that I am. When the man comes here every day, and I know every day the reason that he comes. Stained already. I should fall on my knees before Sonia and beg for forgiveness. Good morning. Come see my drawings. Yesterday you said you'd show me some maps you were working on. I have them. Are you free? I am. Where were you born? In Petersburg. Where did you study? The conservatory. Ah, you may find that this won't interest you. Well, no. Why not? It's true, I don't know the country, the topography. In, indeed. But I have read a great deal, and... Uh... I have my own work table here, you know. In Ivan Petrovich's room. <laughs> and when I'm on the point of extreme exhaustion, I forsake my practice and I steal away and spend an hour or two over my maps. Ivan Petrovich and Sofia Alexandrovna are clicking away at the abacus, and I'm seated beside them at my work table painting away. I'm warm, everything's quiet, I'm at peace. Hear the crickets outside? Totally at peace. Once a month, perhaps, not so very often. All right. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> um.
Ah, look here. We have our district 50 years ago. <laughs> now, the darker light green indicate the forest. As you see, half of the whole is wooded. Mm. Now, where we can find green cross-hatched with red, mm -hmm. it means the range of elks and wild goats. And we show both the flora and fauna here. Um, on the lake, we have swans, geese, ducks, as the old folks say, a power of birds. <laughs> as they would say, far as the eye can see and further. <laughs> Cloud of birds flying. Um, we have the villages and the hamlets. And here and there are very small farms, outposts, religious encampments, water mills, and much cattle. Horned cattle and horses. Yeah, these are marked in blue. Now, in this district, for instance, we have the blue laid on thick. Now, there were great herds here. And each individual household had on the average three horses. <laughs> um, and here, 25 years have passed. Already, we see only one third of the area is timbered. Goats are gone. You still see elk occasionally, but the blue and the green are vanishing. And so on, as we go down to the third rendition, Well, we have our district as it is today. There's no solid green, just the occasional patch. And the elk and the swans and the geese have disappeared. There are no game birds. The grass are gone. And we find no trace of the old settlements. In short, we have here a perfect picture of a gradual and relentless decay, which in 10 or 12 more years will be totally complete and the land will be dead. And you say fine, you say um, deep cultural influences are at work and the old life must naturally give way to the new. And I would agree with you if in place of decimated forests, we had industry, railroads, Schools under construction, mills, and if the populace were happier, better employed, in better health. But what do we have here? We, we have the same swamps, same mosquitoes, the same lack of roads, same typhus, diphtheria, rickets, uh, diseases of poverty, the same eternal fires. So what we see is this, a struggle for existence beyond human strength, where we degenerate in ignorance and sloth. And so man, freezing, starving, diseased man, to preserve the last vestige of his life, to save his children, reaches out reflexively. Stave off his hunger, warm him, feed him in his animal fear and destroy him. With no thought for tomorrow, so that nearly everything has been destroyed. And nothing new brought into being. See, this doesn't interest you. But I understand so little of it. Ah, but apart from that, it holds no interest for you. Well, I must admit, my mind is on 
other things. I see. Forgive me. Not at all. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> what preoccupied me was, in fact, <laughs> I don't know where to begin. <laughs> Please. <laughs> it was, in fact, hmm, an interrogation. An interrogation? Yes, a harmless one, if I may. <laughs> no, no, that's it. <laughs> uh, the matter concerns a certain friend of mine, a young friend. May we, do you think, as people of the world, may we speak frankly? Of course. And that the things we say we never spoke of. Do you understand? I do. The matter concerns my stepdaughter, Sonia. Yes? What are your feelings for her? I respect her. And your feelings for her as a woman? My feelings for her? Yes. I have none. Aha. Well, two more words and I'm done. Have you perhaps remarked her attitude towards you lately? No. Well, I'm done. You don't love Sonia. And you will not. Now she is suffering. And I ask your compassion and let you stop coming here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, it's late. I, I see that I've stayed. You know, I really don't have the time to come here. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> what a sordid interview, forgive me. Oh, it upsets me so. I feel as if I've just worked two days in the fields. <laughs> well, we're, we're done, thank God it's over, and we never spoke of it at all. Fine. And now you must leave. Hmm? You see that? <laughs> My goodness. I've gone quite red. <laughs> Even if you'd approached me a month ago. No. Yes, I would have considered. And if she's suffering, of course, if the girl is... Mm -hmm. suffering. Ah. Oh. I understand. You understand what? Well, to belabor the obvious. Um, when you know how one has to feel towards Sonia. But why the interrogation? I don't understand. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I walk into your trap, didn't I now? <laughs> or worry over the poor girl's feelings. And what do you feel now as, as a man, dear doctor? And why have you been coming here the whole month, every day? Could we know your true feelings? All right. All right, I'll tell you without the charade. I confess it. I'm yours. I surrender. I'm yours. Take me away. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> oh, Lord, you're timid. Um, I've confessed it. Your sweet ruse has forced it out of me. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I'm better than you think I am. I am nobler than you think, and I swear it to you. All right. I'll take my leave of you. This is the last of me, but... 
Where should we meet? Say it quickly. Say it. While we have a moment. Where do we meet? And one kiss. I swear before God. Uh, uh, uh. No need to swear. No need for words at all. How beautiful you are. Your face. Please go away. Tell me where we're going to meet tomorrow. Tell me. No! It's over. It's decided. Have pity on me. Uh, I surely won't. <laughs> Please leave me. Please. By the orchard. <laughs> Two o'clock. Well, never mind. And today, my dear friend, the weather, wouldn't you say, the weather, which looks so cloudy formerly, has changed. And the sun is out, and in what we must say has turned into a splendid afternoon. Winter crops are quite good, actually. Only mark against it is the days grow short. And what can anyone do about that? I would entreat you, please, to exercise all of your influence to see that my husband and I quit this place at once. This afternoon, do you hear? Yes. Did you hear me? Today? Yes. Well, you know, Helen, I saw the whole thing. Tell me you heard what I said. Mm -hmm. We are leaving here today. You know, Your Excellency, I myself am feeling somewhat other than well today. For the last two days, my head, my head especially, doesn't feel well. Where are the others? I hear you. Where are they? I hate this house. Why should I live in a labyrinth, 26 rooms, everybody wondering? Please ask the others in here. What did he say? Oh, no. You're trembling. Are you trembling? That is it. Ah, oh, I understand. He won't be staying around here anymore. That's it, yes. Tell it to me, yes? You know, you know a man could reconcile himself to ill health, but I cannot learn to live the country life. I can't stand it. I feel like I've spun off the earth and landed. Sonia. Sonia! Fine, she ignores me. Nurse, you come in here too, please. Uh, now, if you please, ladies and gentlemen, if you could, if I may, like the sunflower, turn your attentive head. If it's the case that I'm not needed here... I... Oh, no, you're needed here. You have all. Oh, then, if it please you, what do you require? Please require? Why are you angry? Are you mad at me? If I'm guilty, I beg your forgiveness. Fine, fine. What is it? What do you want? And here is Maman. Ladies and gentlemen, now I'll begin. I've summoned you here, citizens, to inform you that the Inspector General has chosen to pay us a visit. Joking aside, then, in a serious vein, I've asked you here for your help and advice, knowing your graciousness and full hope that I shall receive them. I am a scholar, I'm a man of books. I've long been a stranger to the intricacies, the vagaries of a business life. I could not live without the help and guidance of practical folk, and that is true. So I come to you, Ivan Petrovich, Yelena, Maman, Ilya Ilyich, an old man, not a well man, who sees from his age, man at omnes una nox, one night awaits everyone. The time and tide happen to us all, and the end of his life turns to regulate the questions of his property insofar as they touch and concern those around him, his family, 
And my life is finished, but I possess a young wife, a daughter still a child, and for us to continue living in the country is not possible. We're not made to live a country life, and neither can we live in town on income of the magnitude which this estate provides. Now, we could, for example, sell the forest, a measure which is both extreme and non-renewable. Once sold, it yields no further income. So, where could we seek to find a strategy which provides us both a definite and still a permanent means of support? And I've searched for and I think found that strategy. And now I have the honour of presenting it to you. In broad strokes and general outline, our estate yields on the average a gain of, say, 2%. I propose to sell it. If we sell the estate and invest in interest-bearing bonds, we receive four to five percent. Four to five. And I think we should even have a surplus of sufficient funds to purchase a villa in Finland. Uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, would you repeat what you said? I will, with the proceeds, invest in interest-bearing bonds, and with such residue as there is, purchase a small home in Finland. Yes. No, not the Finland pipe. You said the proceeds. The proceeds of what? The sale of the estate. You're going to sell the estate? I propose to sell it, yeah. Ah, yes, that was the thing that caught my attention. You're going to sell the estate. And where do I go? And Sonia here, please? And my mother, if I may be so picayune? Certainly, all in good time. One can't do everything at once. No, one cannot. And speaking of human ignorance, I had always supposed that this estate which you are going to sell belonged to Sonia here. Right. If I may, as my late father bought this estate as a dowry for my sister so that it passed in my ignorance to look upon the law from my sister to Sonia here to whom it belongs. And who disputes it? Right. Certainly. Of course it belongs to Sonia, without whose consent one could not think to sell it, and, and for whose benefit it shall be sold, for Sonia. Am I out of my mind? Am I raving? Why are we listening to this? Jean! Jean! Why? Please don't contradict Alexandre. Please believe me, he knows what is right. Someone! Get me a glass of water. Say whatever you want to say, say whatever you want. Why do you inflame yourself? Do I say my plan is ideal? It's a plan. It's just a plan. And if it's found unsuitable, I shall discard it. Your Excellency, please. Yeah, I myself, as I think you know, possess over and above my reverence for your learning yeah. a feeling of kinship as well, which brings me close to you. My brother, as I think you know, Grigory Ilyich, his brother-in-law, Fustian Trofich Lakidimov, he held a degree. If you please, Waffles, not now. As I say, an MA, a degree. We're talking business. All right. Ask him. Ask him what? The estate was purchased from his uncle. Oh, was it now? Yes, it was, for the price at that time, yes. It was, yes. For the price of 95,000 rubles, of which my father paid out 70, leaving a debt outstanding of 25. Are you following this? Because this estate could not have been bought had I not renounced my share, A, of my inheritance in favour of my sister, whom I dearly loved. And additionally, and additionally, had I not toiled like an ox, which I have done, working here for ten years to discharge the remaining debt, which I have done... I'm sorry that I brought it up. ...and cleared the estate, which is clear and free, thanks to me. Thanks to my efforts, and here you come in here and propose throwing me out into the snow. I don't understand what you're trying to accomplish. I have managed this estate for 25 years. I have slaved and sent you money like the good steward. And not once during that time have you thought to think of the man who worked for you. Not once. For 25 years, you have sent me the magnificent sum of 500 rubles a year. 500 rubles a year! And not once have you thought to increase it. Ivan Petrovich. 25 years! Ivan Petrovich, I'm not a practical man. I mean, you could have raised it any time you chose. I see. I should have stolen. And now you despise me because I'm not a thief. I should have stolen and I wouldn't be a pauper now. Jean. 25 years, I've lived like a mouse in the wall. My mother and I, our thoughts and feelings were toward you alone. 
We talked by day of your work of our pride in you. We uttered your name in awe. Our nights were spent reading your periodicals, your publications, which now fill me with disgust. Then you don't please. I beg you. I don't understand what you think you want. You were a magic being to us, and we knew your words by heart. My eyes are open now. You wrote about art. You know nothing about art. You have no soul. You are a philistine, a fraud, a swine who feeds upon the leavings of his betters. You, you... Thank you. Make him stop. You built us! If one patrol, but I insist you stop. Do you hear me? No, I will not stop. No, I'm not done. I'm not finished yet. You've ruined my life. I've lost the best years of my life for you, you assassin, you thief. I've... You've ruined my life. What is it you think you want? How can you speak to me like that? What right do you have? Nothing. You're nothing. You want the estate? It's yours? Take it. Take it. I have no need of it. I can't stand this hell anymore. Do you hear me? I can't bear it. I'm leaving. My life is ruined. My life is a waste. I've ruined it. Talent, intelligence, courage. I could have been a Schopenhauer. I could have been a new Dostoevsky. I could have designed a new philosopher. Oh, my God, what am I saying? I'm losing my mind. Mama, Mama, help me, help me. I'm in pain, Mama. Do as Alexandre tells you. Mama, oh, what am I to do? Tell me, tell me. I know what I'll do. You think you'll forget me? Nanny. My friends, inform me what is going on. Take him away from me. Am I supposed to live under one roof with that? He lives right here. Move him away from me now, to the village, to one of the outbuildings now, or I shall have to leave, and I will, you hear me? But I will not live in this house with that man. We are living here today. Please. May we start the arrangements, please? Uh, nothing of my man. Please, Papa, please, be merciful, please. We are so unhappy, Uncle and I. Please be charitable. You remember when we were young? Uncle and I spent our nights translating your books for you, you remember? Copying out your texts. All those nights, all those nights we spent, Uncle and I, we worked without rest. We didn't spend a kopeck on ourselves. We sent it all to you. We worked, Papa. We earned our bread. It's coming out wrong. No, but Papa, I'm saying it's wrong. But hear what I'm saying, Papa, please. Understand us. Be charitable. Alexander. You have it out? You have it all out with him. I beg you. I beg you. Very well. Thank you. I shall speak to him. Yes. Did I accuse him? No. What did I accuse him of? Nothing. I'm not angry with him, but his, his actions toward me, we must say charitably, they, they are strange. Oh, uh, well, very well. To please you, I'll go speak to him. Be gentle with him. Be calm. Try to calm him. Shh. Shh. Little one. There, there. The geese cackle. The geese cackle, then they stop. They cackle, then they stop. Nanny, shh, shh. You geese! Stop it! Stop it now! Oh, God! Stop him! Stop him! He's gone mad! Get it! 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 Damn this. Damn. 
kill me. Take me away from here or kill me, but I can't stay here. I can't. What do I think I'm doing? If you want to finish it, you'd better hurry. There's not much left. They'll be calling us soon hmm. to say goodbye. They've already called down for the horses. There's not much left. They're going to Harkov to live there. Mm, so much the better. They had a bad trauma here. Helene Andreevna says, I don't want to stay here. She keeps on saying we must go. We'll stay in Harkov for a while, she says, to, to have a look around, and then we'll send for our things. Well, travelling light. Huh. It seems, Marina Timofeyevna, it seems that they're not predestined to be living here. False predestination. Well, so much the better. Seem worthy of an artist's pen. Oh, my old eyes won't take it anymore. Well, we'll live again as we used to, I know we will. In the old ways. Tea at seven and dinner twelve. And in the evening we sit down to supper. As we always did as Christians. I haven't tasted simple human noodles for a long, long time. Black with sin as I am. Yes, it's quite a while since we've had noodles, mm. that's true. Quite a long while. Yeah, this morning, Marina Timofeyevna, this morning I'm walking through the village uh, and a shopkeeper shouts after me, Hey, freeloader, hey, deadbeat! How did I feel then? Oh, don't pay no mind to them, my darling. We're all freeloaders in the sight of God, living on nothing. Sonia, Ivan Petrovich, all of us. No one sits around doing not one blessed thing while the whole world toils. Where is Sonia? Your Sonia's in the garden with the doctor. They're still looking for Ivan Petrovich. But are they? I'm afraid he might do harm to himself. But where is the pistol? I hid it in the root cellar. Oh, mercy. Leave me alone. Will you leave me, please? Please, leave me. Please, if only for an hour. Spare me this bodyguard. Yes, of course, Fania. The gander. Ga, ga, ga. Leave me. For my part, with the greatest joy. Ought to have left a decent time ago. As I said, though, I will not do so until you return what you took from me. I took nothing from you. I'm speaking to you in all frankness. Do not detain me. I should have gone long ago. I took nothing from you. What are you saying? Eh? All right. If you wish, I'll sit here for a while. Then if you oblige me, subdue you, bind you, and search you. My word on it. As you wish. And the worst of it all, fool of the world is to have shot twice and twice to have missed it. I can never forgive myself for that, no. If the mood for shooting struck you, why not shoot yourself? Myself? I'll tell you an oddity. A man, myself, attempts murder. Do they arrest him? No. Why? Obviously, as I'm regarded as insane and thought to be mad. But a man who cloaks his heartlessness, his cruelty, his, his swinishness, if you will, a man who hides behind a veil of false achievement, this wizard, this genius, this exploiter, he is not mad. A beautiful woman marries this old man and, in the sight of the world, betrays him. I saw what you did. That's right, I did, and you can go to hell. And you? You are not mad. The earth is mad to support you. Quite poetic. Well, I'm a madman. I'm not responsible. Mm. I can say what I wish. That's a lovely trick. Is it? You're not a madman. What am I? You're a fool. Time I thought I used to think the foolish, the deranged, the irresponsible are sick. They're not sick, they're normal. They're quite well. Oh, 
God, I'm so ashamed. You cannot know the shame I feel. How can I stand it? How can I live with it? Tell me, what can I do? Nothing. Give me something to take. Oh, God, I'm 47 years of age. If I live till 60, I'll have to live another 13 more years. How can I live through that? What can I do? What can I do with all those years, you see? You see, if I could begin anew, if I could live the rest of my life out in some different way, if that were possible, as people do, to begin anew, to wake up each day and say, today is a new day. If I could lose the past, if I could do that, tell me. How can a, a man begin anew and start a new life? Shut up, will you? Will you go away? What are you plaguing me with to start anew? We cannot start anew, you or I. This or that that we're living, you know, is our life. It is? Quite. Give me something to take. I have a pain here. Stop it. Now listen to me. People who live after us. In 100 or 200 years, you know? Do you know what they'll feel? They'll despise us for our stupid and insipid lives. And perhaps they'll know how to be happy. We, however, but for you and I, there is but one hope. You know what that hope is? That when we're dead, lying in our graves, visions may visit us and that they are of peace. Oh, yes. Dear friend, we've said in this district we find but two decent cultivated men, and we spoke of ourselves, but this last decade has undone us. Life has sucked us in, this foul Philistine life, and has corrupted us. What a shocking surprise. We've turned out like the rest. <laughs> but we changed the subject. Give me what you took. I took nothing from you. <laughs> you took a large bottle of morphia from my medicine case. If you're set on killing yourself, take your gun and go off in the woods. But give me back the drug, or people will say I gave it to you. It's enough I have to pronounce you dead and cut you open. Can you think I'll enjoy that? Leave me alone. Sophia Alexandrovna, your uncle has filched a file of morphia from me and he won't give it back. Is this true? It is true. Please tell him it's rather dowdy of him, if nothing else, and that I must leave and must have it returned. Give it back, uncle. Why must you frighten us? Give it back. Uncle Vanya, am I more happy than you? Am I? Do I go about despairing? I bear my life and shall till my life comes to its natural end, and so must you please give it back. Give it up to me. Sweet uncle, give it back. Please, sweet one, please, be kind. You who are so kind, take pity on me. Give the bottle back. Uncle. Take the thing. I need work. I must work. Do you understand? Yes. Now I must turn my hand to something. I, I can't. Yes, I understand. As soon as they've gone, we'll yes. we'll sit down and yes, yes, we'll. Thank you. Thank you all. And now I'm on my way. Well, Trovit, are you here? Please go to Alexandre. He has something he wishes to say. Go, Uncle. Come, we'll go in together. You and Papa have to make it up, you know that. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Leaving already? Oh, 
horses are here. Goodbye. Today you promised me you'd move away from here. Yes, I remember. I will, presently. You're frightened. Yes. Then stay. Stay, stay. Tomorrow in the orchard? No. We're going. Which is the reason I can look at you. One thing I should like you when you think of me. To think well of me if you can. I should like you to respect me. I beg you to stay. I beg you to stay. Admit it, there's not one thing in the world for you to go to. Sooner or later, you shall have to face the fact. In Kharkov, in Kursk, somewhere. Why not here, right now? Hmm? And just throw it up and begin again. Hmm? Right now. Hmm? Lovely autumn. Uh, we have orchards and run down country homes right out of Tavinia. Oh, you're funny. You're a funny man. Am I? And I'm angry with you. I'm sorry. But I'll think of you with pleasure. Why is that? You're an original. We'll never see each other again. I'll tell you why I hide it. I was tempted by you. I was taken with you. So. Good. Huh? Shake hands and part friends. Please. Don't think ill of me. Yes. Goodbye, then. Uh, you know, I'll tell you something. It's, this is strange. You see, I'm sure you are a good, warm-hearted person. But yet, what is there in your nature? Something. You and your husband, you come here, industrious people drop their work, they neglect their duties, they waste months ministering to you, listening to you, buzzing around you, worrying for your husband's gout, your wishes for this and the other thing and all become entangled in your idleness. How is that? I was infected. One whole month I haven't done a thing. People are falling ill. The peasants graze their cattle in my new planted trees. All I care about is decayed. Your husband and you, were you light? You spread decay. I've overstated myself, yet, and, and, had you stayed, I feel something, something terrible for me and for you too would have come to pass. You know it too. Oh, yes, you do. You know it too. <laughs> so, finita la comedia. Go, goodbye. 
I take this pencil as a memento. <laughs> That's something, isn't it? You come, we meet. Suddenly you're gone. That's the way the world is, it seems. Do this, though. No one here. Before Vanya comes with some bouquet for you, a kiss, one kiss. Yes, for goodbye. Yes? All right, that's done. That's done. And all's well. I wish you all the best. As I wish you. Whatever. Whatever the theme. Whatever. Oh, God, for once in my life. Well, go quickly. Your horses are ready. You'd better go. I think. Yes. So be it. Let bygones be bygones. I've lived through so much in this last four hours. I've thought so much. I feel like I could compose a treatise for posterity on how one ought to live. I most gladly accept your apology and ask of you to accept mine as well. Farewell. You will receive the same amount that you received before without fail and regularly. Everything will be the same as it was before. Mamo. Alexandre, please have your photograph taken again and send me a copy. I will. <laughs> you know how precious you are to me. <laughs> Uh, goodbye, Your Excellency. Farewell. Don't forget it. Farewell. Farewell, all. Uh, oh, I thank you for the pleasure of your company. I possess nothing but the greatest respect for you, for your way of thinking, for your impulses and your enthusiasm. But I pray you let an old man season his farewell with one small observation. It's not enough to think. One must work. Do you understand me? Above all, the greatest joy is to do some real work in the work world. Ladies and gentlemen, all the best. I wish you all the best. And goodbye. Farewell. Please forgive me. We shall never meet again. Farewell, my dear. Farewell. Waffles? Yes? While they're at it, tell them bring my horses too. Friend, I will. Not going to see them off? <laughs> Let them go where they're going to. No, it, it's too hard. I must turn my hand to something, to some work, eh? And they're gone. Well, the professor will be thrilled. God himself couldn't lure that man back here. They're gone. They're gone. God grant them the best. Well, Uncle, now, what shall we do? Work. Yes. Absolutely. It's a long while since we've been together here. I think the ink is gone. Now they're gone, I'm sad. All right, Uncle. First we'll catch up on our accounts. They're in a wretched state. A fellow wrote today, this is the third time that I've asked you for my balance. All right, you do this one. I'll take the next and so on. 
for the account of In the stillness, pen scratching, crickets chirping, warm, close. No, I don't feel like leaving. Ah, oh, there's my horses. Well, it seems that all it likes is my goodbye. I'm off then. Stay a while. I can't. With the addition of the previous balance of 87 rubles, the balance still remaining. Mikhail Lovovich, your horses are here. Yes, I heard them, thanks. Now, uh, exercise extreme care with these, please. Thank you. And with the case. Yes. Well. When shall we see you again? Not before summer, I think. Hardly this winter. Unless, of course, you need me. Thank you for your kindness, your hospitality. Thank you for everything. Oh, one farewell. Oh, you haven't had your tea. No, I don't want anything. A little vodka. Well, perhaps a little. <clears throat> I've got my trace horse limping. I don't know why, I noticed it yesterday, as he was coming up. He was reshoeing. Mm. Yes, I'll stop at the ferry at Rogers, you know. Yes, I would. No help for it. I should think that down in Africa, the heat must be intense. Yes, I should think so. Here you are. Ah. To your health, little father. Eat some bread with it. No, thanks, unless I'm fine. But don't see me off. <clears throat> well, goodbye, all. The best to you. Goodbye. Second of February. Twenty pounds vegetable oil. Sixteenth, fifteen pounds buckwheat. He's gone. He's gone. For a subtotal of uh, fifteen twenty. Twenty-five. My child, how hard it is for me. If only you knew how hard it is for me. You can't know. But what can we do? All we can do is live. We'll live through a long row of days and through the endless evenings and we'll bear up under the trials fate has sent to us. We will constantly toil for others now and for the rest of our days. And when we come to die, we'll die submissively. Beyond the grave, we'll testify that we've suffered that we've wept and have known bitterness. God will pity us, you and I, dear uncle. God will take pity on us. And we, uncle, shall live a life of radiant beauty and grace and look back on this life of our unhappiness with tenderness. And smile. And in that new life we shall rest, uncle. I know it. I have faith. I have a passionate faith. We shall rest. 
We shall rest to the songs of the angels in a firmament arrayed in jewels and look down and see evil, all the evil in the world and all our own sufferings bathed in a perfect mercy and our life grown sweet as a caress. I have faith. Poor Uncle Vanya, you're crying. I know, I know. You have had no joy in your life. But wait and only wait, Uncle Vanya. We shall rest. We shall rest.